Hello, this is Eric Wamsley, Systems Engineer with Nutanix. Coming at you with a video on how to configure your vCenter server when you have a brand new Nutanix cluster. We're going to be doing this on vCenter 6.7 Update 3B and ESXi 6.7 Update 3B. First things first is to go ahead and flip on over to your vCenter server. And if you don't have a data center, go ahead and right click on your vCenter server, say new data center, and give it a name and right click on your data center and do new cluster and give it a name. Make sure it's unique to your environment and go ahead and enable HA and DRS, then hit the OK button. Then select your cluster and go to configuration and then VMware EVC. And we'll hit edit. And we're going to enable EVC for Intel and then make sure you select your correct EVC mode for the lowest common denominator for your cluster. Mine just happens to be G5s, which is the Broadwell generation. Then hit OK. Then we'll go to Configure, General, and then hit the Edit button. And we'll want to make sure the swap file is stored in the same directory as the virtual machine, and hit OK. Next, we add our hosts. Right click on your cluster to add hosts. Go ahead and put in the IP or domain name of each of the hosts. You can type out that info. If you're adding multiple, you can go ahead and say use the same credentials. Make sure you accept all of the certificate errors and hit next and then finish. It might take a moment for vCenter to add the host, but then if you configured it like I did, you'll notice in 6.7 it won't let you add hosts directly into the cluster since we have a virtual machine running, which is the CVM, and we have EVC mode enabled. So you have to manually add each host into your cluster. You do not have to stop your CVMs. Go ahead and just drag them and drop them into your cluster. And as long as your EVC mode is correct, uh, you should be able to add them without issue. This is one point where it may diverge in your environment. If you're taking a CPU and doing some CPU masking to a lower version, you may have to power off the CVMs that are running on those hosts. Now we need to do some configurations to your hosts. So select your first host, go to configure, go to networking, and then TCP IP config. Select your default stack and hit the edit button directly above the table, not the one on the top right. And then with this, go ahead and fill in all the information that's accurate for your environment. So that would be DNS server, host name, domain that the host is on. Put in your correct routing information, if you have different gateways, put your other name information, and if you have any advanced settings that need to be changed, go ahead and do that now, then hit OK. Then for each host, we need to edit the NTP configuration. That's under Configure, System, and Time Configuration. Hit the blue Edit button on the top right. Check the Radio button for Use Network Time. Put in your NTP servers that are appropriate for your environment. Multiple is definitely preferred. And then go ahead and check the box for starting the NTP service and start and stop the service with the host. And then hit OK. Next, we need to look at the storage and make sure that it's actually attached to all your hosts. So scroll up and under configuration, then storage, go to storage devices. You can see actually I only have the local disk, so let's go and check and see if it sees it at all. Under data stores, all I see are local disks as well. If you go back to Prism, we'll go back to storage, go to the table view, select your storage container, mine is just the default one, go to update, and then select the radio button for mount on all ESXi hosts, hit save, and then if you go back to vCenter we should immediately see that data store is now mounted, and then we can move on to the next steps. Yep, there it is right there. And now it's time to start configuring our cluster. You select your cluster, go to configure, and then vSphere availability, and hit the vSphere HA edit button on the top right. And we're going to change the resp response for host isolation to power off and restart VMs. And then that's it for this page. We'll go to admission control. And then we're going to define the amount of resources to tolerate. So do define host failover capacity by cluster resource percentage. Check the box for override. 
and then do some math and based on the number of hosts you want to protect, divide that by your total hosts and that'll give you your percentage. And hit OK. Then we need to go to VM overrides because we do not want vCenter to manage the CVMs. So if we go to configure, configuration, and then VM overrides, click add, select all your CVMs, hit next, then we want to disable DRS, and we want to disable VM restart priority. Then we want to disable VM monitoring, which is down there at the bottom. So check override and do disabled. And go ahead and hit finish. Now we need to go back to vSphere availability and configure our data store heartbeating. To do that, we would click the edit button up on the top right, go to heartbeat data stores, then check the radio button for use data stores only from the specified list, and then check the tick box next to the data store that we've configured. If you have multiple data stores, feel free to check more of them. Then go to advanced options, paste in DAS ignores insufficient HA data stores and set that to true, and then hit OK. Then we get to play with a fun feature that VMware's had for a really long time, and that's that your configuration settings don't all take effect until you disable and then re-enable HA. So we'll have to go in, edit eight, the settings for HA, disable it, allow all the hosts to be unconfigured with their HA client, then go ahead and re-enable HA, double check that all of the settings you put are still there, and then hit OK, and let vSphere go ahead and configure all your HA agents again. And the last thing we have to do is disable storage IO control. To do that, go to data stores, select your storage container, go to configure, general, and then on the bottom right, hit edit That's next to data store capabilities, and make sure the radio button for disabling storage IO control is selected, and then hit OK. Repeat that for all of your data stores that you have presented. And that's all you have to do but I'm kind of a stickler for making my stuff look kind of neat. So I usually like to go to my virtual machine section, open up my data center, and then make a folder just for my CVMs. So you'll see I'll do that here real quick, make a new VM and template folder, and then just label it CVMs or Nutanix CVMs, something that's very specific to Nutanix. And then I'll drag all of my Nutanix CVMs in there. So that way they're separated out from the rest of my infrastructure, which should hopefully kind of cut down on a little bit of human error and make sure people know that they need to stay away from the Nutanix CVM folder. And I like to do the same thing for storage. So if you go to your data stores, right click on the data center and then do a new data store folder, we're going to make two of them. One is for the locally attached storage of your host, and then the other is for the shared storage presented by Nutanix. So I'll make one that is kind of obvious and call it shared storage. The other I'll call local storage, and then go ahead and move those data stores into those two folders. Then we just need to register vCenter with Prism. So we'll go back to our Prism element, go to settings by hitting the gear icon on the top right, scroll down to vCenter registration, make sure that it's detected your vCenter server. If not, you can manually add it in. But since mine's auto detected, I'll just hit register. And you'll want to type in your administrator username and password, and then go ahead and click register after you do that. And then it'll submit a couple of API calls to vCenter so that it knows that it can fully talk to your vCenter servers and then the two will stay in sync and give you a better experience. And it's always a good idea to review all your vSphere settings. So remember we configured HA, we had VM overrides, there were some DRS settings, some general other cluster settings like the swap file. You also want to set things like NTP, DNS, and all that for your host. So make sure the host specific tasks you do for all of your hosts. And that's how you configure your vCenter server and all your hosts that are associated with vSphere. This is for a Nutanix environment running 5.16 and vCenter and ESXi 6.7 update 3b. Please feel free to check out my other videos on my channel or you can go to my website ewoms.net. You can follow me on Twitter at ewoms. Hope this video was helpful. Have a good one.